On the 28th of September 2023, the UK Government published its final decisions on the zero emission vehicle mandate proposed in 2022. This mandate requires that manufacturers meet a target for the sales of zero emission vehicles with fines for non-compliance. In this video, I'm going to explain the mandate and how it will impact you. The UK zero emission vehicle mandate is a framework placed upon manufacturers through legislation. It says that a minimum percentage of the new cars and vans that they sell must be zero emission vehicles, and this starts from 2024. The percentage they must sell increases annually with very ambitious and aggressive targets. As we can see from this chart, these are aggressive targets. In 2024, they must sell at least 22% of new cars must be zero emission vehicles, and 10% of any vans they sell must also be zero emission vehicles. In 2025, that goes up to 28% for cars and 16% for vans. In 2026, it goes up to 33% for new car sales and 24% for vans. In 2027, that goes to 38% for cars and 34% for vans. 2028 is 52% of new car sales must be zero emission vehicles and 46% of vans. In 2029, the target for cars goes to 66% and 58% for vans, and then in 2030 it's going to be 80% of their new car sales and 70% of their new sales of vans. As you can see, this is an aggressive series of targets. For context, in the UK in 2022, 16.6% of all new car sales were EVs across the market. Some manufacturers, of course, only sell EVs, and that means the other manufacturers are further behind than the 16.6% might suggest. Those that sell internal combustion engine cars at the moment need to exceed their previous EV market share by quite a lot. Now, there are some alternatives to meeting uh, the requirements. The first is that they are allowed to bank sales from one year to reuse them in the following three years. Now, that doesn't help if they're behind from year one, and this is being introduced at pretty short notice, so that might not help them very much, although it may help them a little bit. Another alternative is to trade allowances with other manufacturers, manufacturers who have exceeded their uh, quota. In the first three years, they're also allowed to borrow from future uh, allowances, allowances from future years of their own. Although there is interest accrued in order to make this more difficult and not the standard approach. And if all else fails, they can pay fines for each non-zero emission vehicle, car or van that is sold over and above their cap. Now the fines are intended as a last resort in case a manufacturer cannot achieve compliance any other way. At the end of the year, they will calculate the number of vehicles sold that were zero emission vehicles of what they sold compared to their allowance. And then they will be fined £15,000 per car sold over their allowance that they can't cater for any other way, and £18,000 per van although that is reduced to £9,000 for 2024, the first year. So what's a zero emission vehicle? Well, a ZEV is one that emits no CO2 at all at the tailpipe. This does not cover any form of hybrid. It is not solely battery electric vehicles that count towards a ZEV total. However, in reality, hydrogen fuel cell vehicles, which is another contender that people might want, they are not poised to sell in large numbers. They are just not available in those volumes and they are extremely expensive, as well as there being no infrastructure to fuel them. 
There is also a little bit of an allowance for e-fuels, but e-fuels are also not here, so they are also not going to make any difference at all, really. So effectively, BEVs are the only option. What does this mean for you? Well, I know what a number of you will be thinking straight off. A number of you will think that you can be part of the remainder, a part of the non-ZEV bit that is sold each year. The problem is, if most people think that, all that happens is that internal combustion engine vehicles get more expensive. Why is that, you might ask? Well, if manufacturers can't meet their targets, then they will either have to buy excess allowance from one who can both meet and exceed it and are prepared to sell those allowances, or they will have to pay the fines, because the borrowing thing only applies very early on and is probably not going to help very many people. None of these options are likely to be very cheap. Our manufacturers do not have a lot of spare cash at the moment. Manufacturers are not particularly well off. They don't make an awful lot of money from selling cars in the first place. Um, and they will therefore probably have to pass on any additional costs onto the consumer by way of uh, higher purchase prices on parts of the fleet that are non-compliant. So they would have to spread the costs of either um, purchases of credits, allowances from other people, or fines um, across those other internal combustion engine vehicles. What might those cost increases look like? Well, so I've done a bit of a calculation here. This is a finger in the air. This is um, hypothetical, and it's not based on any particular manufacturer's sales figures. But I've assumed that we have a manufacturer who sells 10,000 vehicles. We're going to keep that 10,000 uh, consistent across this chart. That means in 2024, the maximum number of internal combustion engine cars that they can sell is 7,800. Remember, 22% must be zero emission vehicles. So the internal combustion engine uh, vehicles that they can sell is limited at 7,800. This is all assuming cars. So if they were to sell 8,800, they were to miss by 1,000 that would increase the per vehicle cost of the internal combustion engine cars they sell by £1,705 in 2024. Their internal combustion engine target comes down in 2025. Remember, their ZEV bit goes up, so the ICE target comes down, assuming their sales remain the same. So they can only sell 7,200 internal combustion engine cars, and were they to sell 8,200, then that makes £1,829 increase across all of the internal combustion engine cars. And the amount increases every year that it's going to go up by, and that's because the number of internal combustion engine cars that that amount is spread across uh, reduces, diminishes. So by 2030, if they were still missing by 1,000 vehicles, they would only be allowed to sell 2,000, but if they sold 3,000, then each vehicle would be £5,000 more if it had to be um, catered for but through paying fines, and those fines were passed on directly to the customer. Now, if internal combustion engine cars do become more expensive, this might result in us achieving cost parity between internal combustion engine cars and BEVs more quickly than we might have expected. I think it will be difficult for a lot of manufacturers to achieve compliance automatically, and it will be expensive not to achieve it. Now, there is an additional complexity in amongst the mandate as well. An additional element of the mandate tracks the average CO2 emissions from non-ZEVs, the remainder of the fleet that they're still selling, and ensures that it remains at or under the levels they achieved, that manufacturer or group achieved in 2021. This additional element is to ensure that non-ZEV sales retain the same fuel efficiency or get better, rather than being allowed to decline in the interim period. Now, some trading is allowed between these two parts of the schemes, the ZEV part and the non-ZEV part. So if a manufacturer can reduce the CO2 emissions of their internal combustion engine fleet that they're selling, they can offset that improvement against the ZEV allowance in case they're not going to achieve that. 
Now, I think they are relatively unlikely to make significant investment, investments in internal combustion engine technology at this point. So they're not going to improve the uh, emissions or reduce the CO2 emissions from their vehicles very much um, through making technological changes. This extra flexibility could result, therefore, in manufacturers being keen to reduce the sales of their most polluting vehicles first. What is the most polluting set of vehicles? Well, it will be vary by manufacturer, but one of the things that's going to be in the firing line probably is SUVs. They are bigger cars and they offer worse fuel economy. And so it seems likely that um, internal combustion engine SUVs, particularly big ones with large engines, may be uh, disappearing sooner. Now, fortunately, the SUV market has been well catered for with EV choices by pretty much all manufacturers. That's really where they've all started um, with their EV journey in releasing uh, new EV models. And that might be a, be a blessing for the manufacturers because they might be able to um, get some benefit from the non-ZEV uh, proportion of their allocation um, and use that to offset the EV um, you know, the zero emission vehicle part of it. Now, of course, this is very complex legislation and I don't intend to cover all of it in this video by any means. I certainly haven't covered all of it um, so far. However, there will be links to uh, all the detailed documents that I've managed to find in the description if you want to go and learn more for yourself. But I think we can expect to hear more about this mandate and what this means in reality as more information becomes available and easier to digest. Just at the moment, the information is not particularly easy to find or understand. Now, there are a couple of notes that I wanted to call out just here near the end of the video. The first is that this will be applied at the group level. So it doesn't have to be done by brand. And if a brand that is part of a larger group, as so many of them are, um, doesn't want to change quickly, then they may be able to offset that by some of the other brands in that group improving more quickly um, and making a bigger benefit in the overall sales figures. Uh, so some brands may not be immediately affected. And for completeness, just so that you don't have to put it in the comments, I also wanted to point out there are a couple of exclusions, a couple of important exclusions. So firstly, there's a thing called the small volume manufacturers. That's a manufacturer that sells two and a half thousand vehicles or less per year. They can apply to be excluded, although they do have to apply. There's a group called micro volume manufacturers. That's a manufacturer that sells less than a thousand vehicles per year. They are automatically excluded. And then there's a category called SPVs, special purpose vehicles, which are also excluded. This includes wheelchair accessible vehicles and vehicles which are sold in order to be adapted to be wheelchair accessible. But it also includes a number of other things which are thought to be difficult to, um, to transform, including things like hearses, although I don't think hearses will be particularly difficult. But there are a few categories of vehicles that are included, but not very many. So there could be some additional impacts from this in the UK. One of them is that we might see a couple of manufacturers withdraw from the UK as a result of this legislation. Suzuki, for example, is one that stands out very much so because they have no ZEVs on sale at all at the moment. They have just um, released a, uh, a concept car, I think it was, maybe a prototype, um, which they showed very recently, but that's not available very soon. So I think Suzuki are in trouble. And I can't see them being able to put the price of all their internal combustion engine cars up by a lot in order to cover the fact that they're not going to sell any of the 22% that they need to next year. There are some other J Japanese manufacturers that I think are in trouble as well. Toyota and Subaru have only got one zero emission vehicle each. Actually, that's not quite true because Toyota also sells um, the uh, hydrogen fuel cell car, but uh, only in tiny numbers. And in terms of battery electric vehicles, they only have one each, um, and they are not particularly good vehicles. So I think 
um, even though diehard fans might buy them, diehard fans of those manufacturers, they will be very disappointed with them. Um, and so Toyota and Subaru are both in a bit of trouble. And even Honda is going to struggle, I think. So Honda have got two cars. They've got the, uh, the, Honda, the little Honda E, which is very expensive and offers very limited range. It's a nice car, it's a fun car, um, but they're not gonna sell that in big numbers. And the other one they do is only just available and I don't know what numbers it's gonna be available in. So Honda are gonna struggle a bit as well, I think. The other thought I had was that uh, companies that can sell their allowances to other manufacturers are going to do quite well. So anybody that is selling only zero emission vehicles is going to have an extra source of income by selling their allowance uh, to other manufacturers. There was one other thought, which is whether we in the UK are going to get a higher percentage of manufacturers uh, production output of EVs in order to be able to try and cover the fact that um, they may not have been ramping up quite quickly enough for this. So, you know, they may be making enough, but it might be that we in the UK get a higher percentage than we might have expected in order to try and cover off the fact that so many of the percentage of vehicles that they sell need to be zero emission vehicles. So in summary, a total ban of internal combustion engine vehicle sales was recently moved back to 2035 in the UK from an earlier goal of 2030. However, the ZEV mandate is going to require manufacturers to rapidly switch to selling EVs and therefore to switch their manufacturing pretty quickly as well. And I think this will impact the marketplace somewhat significantly. So what I think you need to do is you need to get learning about EVs, what they can do and um, what you're looking for when you buy one and also get trying EVs yourself. I created a video entitled EVs, time to try one for yourself in which I listed a few ways in which you can try an EV for not very much money. So you might want to have a watch of that. That will be linked to from the end of this video um, and also from in the description and that shows you some ways that you can have a go in an EV yourself and start the learning process or continue the learning process if you're already on that track. There are of course other videos on my channel that are intended to help with the learning process about EVs so check out the, uh, all the playlists that are available on my channel and see if some of those can help you with your learning process as well. Well, that's it for another video. Thanks again for joining me if you have. Your comments and questions are most welcome in the section below. I'd love to hear what you think this is gonna do, what impact this is gonna have on the UK market and whether will it have a wider impact across Europe as well. If you've liked the video, it's a help to me if you click the thumbs up button. That shows YouTube that you've enjoyed it and therefore YouTube may promote it to other people who will also enjoy it based upon that. And of course, click subscribe if you want to see more. Thanks.